Welcome back. One of the big issues in this year's legislative session is tort reform. And while some reform may be needed, there are also some serious consequences to those efforts. One of the proposals, for instance, would limit the ability of crime victims to sue apartment complex owners for negligence. It is a measure being pushed by the insurance industry. As the bill was racing through the legislature last week, I spoke to attorney Michael Haggard about what this new law would mean. There's a huge effort by corporations in the state of Florida uh, who have a duty under the law to provide reasonable security. And so that duty has existed from the beginning of time that they need to provide a reasonable safe premises if they have prior crimes on their premises. So what those businesses are doing is they're trying to say, well, what we want to do is even after we've been found negligent or reckless by a jury, we want to then point the finger at the very criminal we were supposed to protect against. We want to put that criminal in the courtroom and blame them so that they would get 90%, 100% of fault, and the crime victim would recover nothing. And the problem with that is once businesses are able to do that, then that enters into their budget, and they start saying, well, we can't really be sued. We basically have immunity because we can blame the terrible murderer. We can blame the deranged rapist. So why would we have security guards? Let's cut down on security guards. Let's cut down on our security cameras, our access gates. And that what will that's what will happen if this attack on crime victims is passed. Now, shouldn't the criminal bear some responsibility? I mean, from a common sense standpoint, does it not make sense to include the criminal on the jury verdict form in a civil case? It makes about as much sense as putting the criminal on a civil verdict form as it would the negligent apartment complex to put them in the criminal case and put them on the criminal verdict form and find them guilty of, of committing a crime. Negligence is one thing. And the negligence here is to protect against that very risk. Imagine Nicholas Cruz sitting in the civil case, in the civil courtroom with those 17 families and the Broward County School Board saying, sure, we knew he was a risk. Sure, we knew he came in with a rifle bag. All we did was commit negligent. negligence. He's the one who slaughtered everyone. He's the one who did that. Those are two entirely separate things. And it really cuts at the very heart of why have security in the first place if you can just blame the criminal. It'd be like somebody saying, I know my dog bit you. And I know I knew my dog had all this propensity to bit other people. But blame my dog. Don't blame me. Don't sue me. Obviously, in the vast majority, overwhelming majority of cases, the criminal has no financial means to actually help the victims of crimes actually get something. Who's going to pay the balance of those medical bills? Not the responsible apartment complex, not the negligent mall, but rather the taxpayers. You and I and everybody watching are going to put that bill through Medicaid rather than the responsible parties. And that's why the insurance industry wants it. They, they want to avoid culpability, avoid responsibility, and push it on a criminal who's never going to be have any funds to pay that, may not even be caught. In a majority of homicides, there is no arrest. So it's a phantom criminal they're talking about that no one can find and they'd rather put that on the victim and on the taxpayers. So you believe this is being pushed by the insurance industry and the condo associations and those groups. That's who's pushing this aspect of tort reform? 100%. The affordable housing industry, which are really billion dollar developers, are getting $1 billion to build 1 million apartments in the state of Florida. That is the Senate president's priority. That is being traded for premises liability. The developers are going to get a billion dollar handout in immunity in this session. One of the biggest wins of an industry in the history of the Florida legislature. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a million apartments built over the next five to 10 years with no security. At the same time that this legislature passes, open carry of weapons. It will be a crime spike like this state has never seen. Now, as I understand it, another aspect of the bill would allow condo owners or, or complex owners if they take certain checklists, go through and make certain things, you know, whether it's a one inch deadbolt lock indoors or having a security camera here, if they take those steps, they're rewarded under the, under the bill 
with additional li liability protection? T t explain that to me. Absolutely. One part of the bill is an apartment immunity provision that if apartment complexes or, or condominiums take certain steps, they would get a, a presumption of immunity in front of the court. That would be fine if someone had talked to the Department of Justice, a security expert, who would give them real steps. Currently, the bill says if you have a people, which everybody has, if you have a deadbolt, which everybody has, if you have lights in your parking lot, which everybody has, and you have one camera, you get a immunity presumption. Nothing about security guards. Nothing about if there's a string of six robberies at an apartment complex, you have to adjust your security. Just a couple of legislators put four things in there, which everybody has anyways, to give the same affordable housing coalition who's getting this billion dollar gift immunity provisions. And they have not talked to a single security expert, and that's been verified in all the committees. Talk to me about what you see the larger issue, what's going on right now with regard to tort reform in Tallahassee. Absolutely. The people who have testified are the crime victims. Uh, Meyer Marcano's family, uh, young woman who's- Remind people about that case, by the way. Let me just jump in there. Because because a lot of things came out of that, that, that murder that they're now going to undermine with this. So ex just take a moment to talk about the, the Mercano case. Absolutely. Meyer Mercano was, was killed by a maintenance worker that worked at the apartment complex she lived at. She was a student at Central Florida. That individual had a felony record. He had been fired from his previous job because of an obsession he had with a tenant. They did no background check. And then they gave him a key fob that worked to every single apartment complex at that building. Uh, and he abducted young, young Mia and then he uh, killed her. Last year, a law was passed in her honor that said you have to do background checks and you cannot give a key fob to someone unless they're the absolute top of the list, the head apartment manager. This bill would absolutely make that meaningless because what could happen is in a jury uh, verdict, which will happen this fall, in her case, it will be tried in Orlando, then the apartment complex, who has already been found negligent by the Florida legislature, by this governor, by signing that bill, that they get to then say, I know we were reckless, but Caballero did it. Caballero's a monster. He's the devil. Blame him. And that makes no sense under our law. The Florida Supreme Court unanimously said that in 1997. The Republican-controlled Senate under Jeb Bush in 2005 voted this provision down to put the bad guy, the criminal, on the civil verdict form. Maya's father testified, correct, uh, just, the, just this past week, correct? Absolutely. Testified and begged that Senate committee in the full Senate to absolutely reject this and his daughter's legacy. And he asked specifically Senator Linda Stewart, who uh, sponsored uh, Mia's ball, uh, bill last year to please vote no uh, against this terrible legislation. You were you were talking a little bit about other crime victims that also testified. I interrupted you because I wanted to get into the Mercado case a little bit. But talk to me about who are some of the other people who've testified this past week. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the tort reformers and big business want to make this all about travelers. It has nothing to do with travelers. It has to do with uh, the the crime victims, such as, you know, Mia Marcano's family, Parkland victims who have been up here, uh, others who have had children killed in apartment complexes and malls, the National Center for Victims Crime, um, human sex trafficking advocates who are telling everyone in Tallahassee, if you pass this bill, there will be no security at the new million apartments. Sex traffickers are going to have a haven. They don't have to be at hotels anymore where they're watched. They could go and buy their own apartments with no security. Uh, police sheriffs have come up, prosecutors, talking about the increase in crime that this will have because businesses naturally will cut their bottom line if they can't be held accountable for these crimes.